Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Diego Granados and I'm a product manager. Today we will talk about the top five skills that any aspiring product manager should have and include in the resume and interview preparation. I'll give you a summary of how each skill is used by product managers every day and I'll share some tips on how you can show these skills in your application. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because my goal is to help you get into product management. At this point, you might have heard that the responsibilities of a product manager will change depending on things like whether it's a technical versus non-technical role or the type of technology involved or even the size of the company. And while yes, all of that is true, there are certain skills that are common across all product managers, regardless of the work that we're doing. And so here are the top five skills that every product manager should have and that you need to make sure that are present in your resume and in your stories when you're applying to product management. Number five, empathy. Empathy is about understanding and sharing the feelings of others versus just acknowledging their situation. In product management, we typically talk about empathy towards our users. The goal is to really understand your users and guide you and your team in designing a great solution to their problems. In fact, typically during the ideation phase of new products and features, when we use design thinking, we create empathy maps to result in users' personas. These empathy maps helps us to visualize what users say, think, does, and feels. Moreover, empathy goes beyond our users and customers, and it's also about empathy towards our team and stakeholders to better understand them and be more successful during product and feature development. So how can you show this skill? Well, empathy is not a keyword that you would typically add in a resume. It is a skill that you can show actually during an interview. You can talk about what you did to understand a customer or user's requirement beyond just looking at a document or how you reacted to solve a problem when somebody in your team told you about it. In an interview, empathy questions can also come in the form of hypothetical scenarios where they ask you situations where customers need are not met or situations with difficult customers. Number four, data driven. Being data driven for product managers is not just about knowing your way through a database or use SQL to find information. Being data driven is about understanding that data comes in all shapes and forms, and it's the job of the product manager to use it throughout development of a product to support the decisions, validate assumptions, and influence others. For example, PMs can use the results of a customer survey and customer interviews when ideating new products and new features. We will also do pricing analysis and use COGS data, value proposition, market research, and other techniques to put a price to our products. And one last example about being data-driven is that when our products and features are launched, we will look at the product metrics and telemetry to ideate new features and prioritize the features and the stories in our backlog. So how can you show this skill? Well, in your resume, you can include an accomplishment where you used one or more sources of data to make or influence a decision. Remember that it's all about showing those transferable skills. You can add something along the lines of created or design a process or a feature or an improvement by surveying or interviewing customers. And of course, don't forget about adding the impact to your accomplishment. In an interview, you'll do something similar. In a star story, you can talk about the data that you use to make a decision or to influence your team into doing something. Being data-driven is very important for product managers. Number three, working cross-functionally and living without authority. I grouped these two because working cross-functionally is not just being about involved in a project where users, engineering, or marketing, or any other group are copied in an email. Product managers, we have to put on different hats and speak different business languages to work with groups like customer, engineering, marketing, legal, finance, and so many others to successfully ideate, develop, and launch features and products into the market. However, typically, no one from any other group will report to you, and yet you have to influence them of doing something. So while yes, there is a lot of working cross-functionally, it can't go without living without authority. So how can you show this skill? In your resume, you can add some accomplishments where you explicitly call out other groups that you work with. Think of an achievement such as worked with engineering and marketing to accomplish something. And don't forget the impact. 
Similarly, for influencing without authority, in your resume you can add some accomplishments where you led a team or influence a team to do something. And for your stories during an interview, you want to tell stories where you worked or influenced a team. Number two, dealing with ambiguity. You probably have heard about dealing with ambiguity, but what exactly does this mean? Well, for product managers, it is our job to pave the way so that the team can move forward with new products and new features. And in many, many, many cases, there won't be a clear direction on what to do next. And that means from figuring out what you and your team are going to build by talking to users and setting a plan, a vision, creating roadmaps and helping with the backlog, solving any questions that the team may have or finding the answer creating business cases and presentations to the different stakeholders in the project, doing a COGS analysis or a pricing analysis. As a PM, you have to be comfortable with ambiguity that will exist in your day to day and use it to your advantage to pave the way. And how can you show this skill? Well, dealing with ambiguity can be shown in your resume and in interview through stories where you started projects and saw them to completion or for some of you creating your own company. It can also be shown as using data to make sense out of something like a decision made or a phase in a project. Dealing with ambiguity can also be expressed as translating the customer pain points into requirements, and the list goes on. As you can see, there are many ways that dealing with ambiguity can be shown in a resume or in an interview. And it's all about how you tell your stories and how you express that in an uncertain situation, you made objectives and requirements clear for you and the rest of your team. And last but not least, communication and customer obsession. These two are extremely important elements to any product manager, and I could do an entire video just in these two. But today, we'll do a brief summary. PMs, we have to be obsessed about understanding and solving our customer pain points. Our products and features are all based on these pain points, or at least they should be. Every now and then, you find products that don't really solve any pain points. Now, communication is not just about how you lead the meeting or how you talk with a customer. It's just part of it. Communication is also about being a storyteller. It's about how you write features and user stories, how you elaborate a product requirement, and how you present to your team, stakeholders, and the executive team. Product managers, we need to understand and obsess over their customer pain points to solve them and be effective in the way we communicate with our team and stakeholders to bring awesome products and features to the market. And how can you show this skill? In your resume, make sure that you highlight any interactions or projects with internal or external customers, as well as any presentation or projects you may have pitched to executive teams. And during your interviews, communication is not only assessed through specific questions, but also throughout the entire interview. As you are answering your star stories or your product case questions, make sure that your answers are concise and to the point. Make sure you have a good framework and a good structure to answer questions in an interview. And yes, I'm sure that there are other skills that didn't show up in this list that you're thinking about. However, after talking with many other product managers, recruiters, and hiring managers, the skills that I mentioned here are the most common ones that every aspiring product manager should have during the process of applying and interviewing for product management. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. If you have any questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And as always, I'll see you next time.